With Jacksonville poised to elect a new mayor, last night's debate was a chance for the many undecided voters here to get answers where the seven candidates stand. During the debate, you watched here on Channel 4 and streaming on News for Jax and News for Jax Plus. All seven candidates were given the chance to answer your most asked questions about crime, underserved neighborhoods and renovations to the stadium for the Jags and who should pay. Joining me on the morning show, News for Jax political analyst and head of the Jacksonville Public University Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Bruce. So it was a chance for us to get answers. Did we really get anything substantive, find out anything new? Probably the thing most new was that we could actually have a discussion with all seven candidates and it be conducted in a civil way, a respectful way, and it could be on the issues. I thought last night's debate was a sharp contrast to what we've seen in the campaign so far. Although more money has been raised for this mayoral election than any in our history, and more money has been spent on personal attacks than any in our history, it hasn't been an opportunity for the people of Jacksonville to get to know all the candidates, their backgrounds, their qualifications, their understanding of the issues, and their policy positions. There weren't big policy differences among the candidates last night. I mean, many, many people, including me, would like to see follow-up and more subs depth, but it was constructive, it was positive. Each of the candidates had an opportunity to introduce themselves to the people of Jacksonville, to demonstrate their knowledge of the issues, and to put forth their policy positions. If you're asking where they're was their new ground broken? Not really from a policy standpoint, but in terms of public discourse and public discussion, it was an important debate last night. So from a forum like this, you look to see if there are surprises or to see if anybody broke through the pack. Bruce, I don't think so. It wasn't a night in which any one candidate out of the seven broke out, but it was also a night in which no candidate made a major mistake. And I think through the lens of each campaign, they probably thought they advanced their cause pretty well. On the Democratic side, for example, Audrey Gibson has a long history in the Florida legislature, but many people don't know her. She had a chance to... to speak openly last night, but on the Democratic side, Donna Deegan performed very well, as she does in these forums. On the Republican side, the three major leading candidates, each one of them, I think, advanced their cause from the perspective of their campaigns. Leanna Cumber, I think, made a strategic decision to stay positive, and I think she was well served by that. She told the people of Jacksonville for the first time that she's a lawyer, that she's done infrastructure deals in the past, and she demonstrated a knowledge of finance and taxation. Daniel Davis played to his strength, which is his background and qualifications, talking about the city council, Florida legislature, CEO of the chamber, and I think his performance improved as the night went on. But maybe the Republican who helped himself the most was Al Ferraro, in part because he's not as well known, expectations may have been a little bit lower, but he came across as authentic, as genuine, and thematically, he brought everything back to public safety, which is important, so I thought he had a good night. Each of the campaigns, I believe, advanced their cause, no breakout, but no major mistakes. So you mentioned it was a very civil debate. It was. But there was a little jab that basically happened after. During the Post News Conference, Donna Deegan took a jab at Daniel Davis, basically for not sticking around, essentially saying something to the effect that Davis is like the current establishment. Uh, they dump millions of dollars into the race, and it's duck and cover, and they win because he didn't stick around, Davis. Uh, did that surprise you? Well, actually, what Donna Deegan was talking about, in part, was that the Davis campaign made the decision not to participate in the post-debate interviews. And Donna Deegan was addressing the fact, she and others have talked about this, that at major forums with all the candidates, the Davis campaign does not show up. In other debates, this is the only televised debate, the Davis campaign doesn't show up. And they didn't show up last night. And so Donna Deegan was talking about that. You've had some columnists talk about that. So one of the issues that has arisen is the very issue that Donna Deegan was talking about last night, and that is that the public's right to hear from the candidates, to hear from them together, and she was addressing that last night in the post-debate discussion. You got a crowded field of seven. For somebody to win, they need 50% of the vote plus one. Likely we're gonna have a runoff? Yes. <laughs> there is going to be a runoff. No one's gonna get 50% of plus one in this crowded field. I don't think last night's debate was a game changer for any of the one candidate, any candidate in particular. It may have been a game changer in terms of our public discourse because it was constructive and positive, but I also think it left us wanting more from the candidates, more substance, more policy issues, more discussions, but there will be a runoff, and that runoff will be in May. May 16th is the election, and we're hoping to host a debate on May 3rd at Jacksonville University with WJXT Channel 4, and Kent Justice, who did a terrific job he last night, job. will be the moderator for the runoff debate. If you were to look into a crystal ball, and you don't have to answer this, would you care to say who might be left standing in that runoff? I'm going to dodge that. Uh, okay, there, there's some polling out there, but I will say this. For the front runners, last night was a pretty good debate because it was not a game-changing debate in terms of substance. It was an important debate. 
but not consequential in terms of changing the trajectory of this race, I don't believe. All right, and I think one of the reasons that Rick is dodging that is one of the reasons that we haven't talked about who are the front runners in the polls and things, because we don't want to jade you, and we want you to be able to make up your own minds.